Hey friends, it's Jessie. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another eyeshadow palette review video. You know I'm a hoe for eyeshadow. Today we are going to be doing a review and look using the new Milk Cosmetics Gemini 2 palette look at this beauty. I feel very aesthetic with my olive uh, bodysuit to go with the palette and Monster Monstera is also making an appearance today so make sure to say hi to him. This video does have two components to it so I do have the tutorial, the look that I did today uh, will be the first part and then the second part is going to be my thoughts and review of the palette so uh, I will link timestamps down below if one or the other is not your vibe. You're more than welcome to skip ahead if that is more your style. So let's go ahead and start with the look. I've already prepped my eyes with the Fenty Pro Filter Eye Primer and then I just set that with this light shade in my Naked Cherry just to make it all blend better. The first shade I'm going to go into is this top one which I think is called Bella. These are usually I feel like Hispanic names and I'm not good at pronouncing those uh, but I'm just taking that on a Morphe E28, a fluffy blending brush and I'm just going to kind of buff that all over the lid. It's very light so it shouldn't be um, like a harsh color and this is just going to act as my transition. There is quite a bit of fallout in this shade. All of the shades have a little bit of fall. It's kind of the typical melt fallout. I personally am not bothered by it but I know that that is a red flag for some people so I figured I would mention it just in case that is something you are not a fan of. So just kind of blending a cute little peachy moment. Next, I'm taking a Morphe M433 and I think I'm going to actually hop over into Sweetheart, which is a couple shades darker than the first shade we did. And this one I'm going to place in my crease and a little bit above. I'm blending in circular motions to make sure it is nice and diffused. And this is just deepening up that transition a little bit. And I'm going back into that first fluffy brush and just tapping very lightly into Bella again. And I'm just going to blend that on the very edge of the two shades we did, just so you really see that bright pop on the outline. There we go. I think that is blended pretty good. Next, I'm going to take, this is a Morphe M514. And I'm going to hop into Love Sick, which is this deeper berry. I'm just kind of building all of those shades on top of each other, lightest to darkest, to really give um, some good pigmentation. And this one, I'm only blending right in my crease. I'm not going up like I did with the other two shades. This one I'm concentrating just in that crease area. Still using those circular motions just to make sure it's very diffused into the other shades. I find that circular motions work best with melt shadows. Uh, they are very pigmented and it takes a little bit of extra work to blend them seamlessly. If you notice, I've been tapping off the extra product every time before hopping into my eyes and that is just because these shades are super pigmented and if I don't do that, I might end up with a little bit too much trying to blend it out. Also, I feel like it helps to reduce the fallout because you're not having all those extra flakes of product just hanging out on the tip of the brush. You're knocking those off before taking the picked up product and putting that on your face. I'm just gonna take the other blending brushes I used and just make sure that's all blended very nicely. Kind of refine that blend a little bit. I'm actually gonna take the brush from the ABH palettes. These come in like all of their like velvet cover, like the Modern Renaissance, Soft Glam, but they have the best ends for shimmers. I sprayed my brush down with some setting spray and now I'm gonna jump into Schmood, which is this really deep like rose gold type shade. When I used this the other day, I wasn't super impressed with this shadow, but I do feel like it has a very pretty grungy reflect to it. It's kind of like that foiled metallic texture. I'm just popping that all over the lid. This shade is giving me quite a bit of fallout underneath, so I'm gonna just take a powder brush and sweep that to the side. It doesn't get it all, it kind of smears it just a tiny bit, but it's better than having 
really awful flakes of glitter on my face. We have this grungy, smoky, kind of nude rose vibe going on. The last thing I want to do to the top before we move to the lower lash line is I want to take this Morphe. It's an M506 and we are going to hop into LX Queen right here. I'm just going to take this and put this in the very outer corners of my eyelid and crease area, kind of where the crease and the eyelid meet. And I'm just using that to really define that as the end of my eyelid and really deepen up that corner. I'm brushing it very slightly over onto the lid, but keeping it concentrated mostly in this corner. This is the vibe so far. I wanna take a break from the top and move on to the lower lash line real quick. I have this angled shadow brush from Color Wow. I actually think it's supposed to be an eyebrow brush, but it's too thick for me to use it like that. Um, but I'm gonna take this and hop into this very end olive shade Almond Eyes. And I'm going to start smoking that on my lower lash line. I want to do kind of rosy on the top and I think like the grains on the lower part. I'm not worrying about it being perfect because I am going to go through and smoke that out a little bit after. And then just taking a clean fluffy blending brush, I'm just going to smoke under there a little bit just to blend so there's no harsh line. Using that same brush, I'm going to hop into Mateo right here, which is this really pretty grungy olive green. It's the second shimmer in the palette. And I'm going to just kind of go over where I put that first green shade and just keep that close to my lower lash line just to add a little bit of sparkle. Again, smoking everything out with that fluffy blending brush. I do want to do a quick winged liner. So this is the MAC Brush Black Brush Stroke Liner, my all-time favorite liquid eyeliner. And I'm just going to do a quick wing real quick. To finish up the eye look, I'm going to take Bella again on just a pencil smudger brush and I'm going to pop that in the inner corner to be my inner corner highlight. There isn't a really bright shimmer shade I can use as a highlight shade, so we're just going to work with what we have and I think this will work. This will work. I'm also going to quick pop on some mascara and I will meet you guys back for my thoughts. Welcome back friends. It is time to do my final thoughts and review of this palette. I have been using it for the past week. If you noticed in the tutorial portion, I actually have two Gemini palettes, two Gemini 2 palettes, I should say. Um, so I ordered one online off of Sephora and this is the one that I used in the tutorial portion. As you can see, the shade came completely shattered. I know it's not a big deal to a lot of people, but it's kind of a big deal to me, especially when you're spending, I think this palette was like $52. So this is the one I've actually been using. Um, they were nice enough to send me a replacement, uh, but I just can't touch it. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel like I'm very grateful, of course, don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful they sent me a new one, um, but I've just been using the broken one for now. Long story short, let's go ahead and talk about the palette itself. So we have one, two, three, we have 10 beautiful shades, uh, seven of which are more on the berry plum side. And then these bottom three right here are these very grungy olivey tones. I really like the contrast. I love the range in this. We have a very light uh, matte shade, which we used in our look today, all the way down to this really deep purple. And I feel like you have even some contrast within the greens. Uh, you have a light, a dark, and then this beautiful shimmer to accent. Overall, I would say the color story is gorgeous. Berry tones are one of my favorite shades to wear on myself. I have kind of like blue gray eyes and I feel like these types of tones just really bring my eyes out. So of course, anything berry related, I'm gonna pick up. One of the big things I hear about complaints um, with the Melt Cosmetics palettes is the quality or kind of like the inconsistency. So I just wanted to touch on that real quick. I have used each shade several times over now and I can confidently say I feel like the quality is pretty good. The mattes are those creamy, buttery, rich mattes that I expect from Melt Cosmetics and even the shimmers I feel like are gorgeous. I wouldn't use them on their own. I definitely would recommend using a glitter glue or spraying your brush down. I feel like that's what gives it the really metallic -y pop because if you can see, um, I don't know if you can tell on the lower lash line too much, but I used both shimmers in the palette. I did spray it down and I feel like it gives you almost like a duochrome effect. So I would recommend using these shimmers with a spray bottle, some water. I don't 
whatever your vibe is. My one complaint about the shades themselves are these olive tones at the end. I felt like they pull a little bit more brown on my skin tone rather than green, which isn't a huge deal because um, I do have the original Gemini and this one has all of my olive goodness in it for me. Um, but if you don't have both or maybe you don't want the first one, you just want a couple pops of green, just be aware that they are going to pull a little bit more like camo green instead of like olive green you know they're gonna have a little bit of like that brown hint to them speaking of comparisons I just wanted to hold these up for you guys so you could see the difference here are the two palettes side by side the original Gemini and the Gemini 2 ignore my finger I dipped it in the black by accident um these are so awkward to hold up I do feel like these two palettes are very complementary to each other and I feel like this is the romantic like younger sister to the Gemini so I really feel like they nailed the theme they really got it to a point where like you can use just one or the other but they both go really good together and I love that they did that I feel like it would be really frustrating if they had two Gemini palettes and they couldn't go together so I feel like this is just a continuation of this one like honestly if you were to put this row started on this side you would just have this gorgeous continuation 20 shade palette it's beautiful so I feel like they really nailed what they were going for. I do like that in the original Gemini, some of these shimmers are more glittery. So this one is Gemini. This one is a little bit more of a chunky glitter shade rather than um, like the soft metallics that are in the Gemini 2, but I can kind of see why they did that. The Gemini 2 would definitely be more user friendly if you are, you know, a working individual, somebody that just wants something a little shimmery, nothing in your face. I do feel like the Gemini 2 would be the more wearable palette of the two if that was something you were kind of looking at. The other thing I wanted to touch on is comparisons to a couple other palettes. So I have a lot of berry tone palettes in my collection. Like I said, they're my favorite types of shades on myself. And I wanted to compare it quick to the Millennial Pinks from Melt. Uh, if I can try to not destroy my palettes. So I ended up off camera dipping into this shade Pink Noise. And I used that as my inner corner highlight and brow bone highlight over Bella. Because this one doesn't have a really good inner corner brow bone highlight. That's just a personal preference thing. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if that is something that is a concern to you I would note that there is no good inner corner brow bone highlighting shade in here you do have those deeper shades like uh, this plum one LX Queen and boy mom are both pretty deep they're picking up a little bit lighter in camera but in person I feel like they're a little deeper and perfect to deepen up your looks so if you just wanted something on the brighter side to contrast it with um, I would have to reach into another palette but that's just something to note personal preference wise um, the other palette I thought it was similar to is my Naked Cherry. I feel like the berry tones in the Gemini 2 and in the Naked Cherry, if I can hold them up okay, are very, very similar. I feel like the Gemini 2 might be a little bit on the warmer side, whereas the Naked Cherry has a little bit more of a cool undertone, but I find the vibe very similar. So if you have both and maybe you want to keep a smaller curated collection, maybe it's worth a skip. Um, I really enjoy the quality though. I feel like it's amazing. I honestly feel like Melt hit it out of the park with this one. There's so much variety. I've been wearing this one nonstop for the past week. Green looks, berry looks, all the things, and I'm obsessed with it. So I highly recommend if this is one that you have your eye on and you are open to expanding your collection a little bit, it is definitely a hit for me. I'm obsessed and I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and share some of the swatches for you guys. So as you can see, they are very pigmented. The shimmers, I did have to go over a couple times to get it to be that nice vibrant color. Uh, but overall, I feel like all of these colors are just immensely gorgeous. I think they're stunning, highly recommend. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for joining me and chatting about some new makeup. Let me know if you picked up this palette or if you're interested in picking it up. I really think it is a great addition to anybody's collection, if I do say so myself. I hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye, friends.